Bon après-midi. Je m'appelle Jane Harmon, le président du Wilson Center. C'est mon grand, grand plaisir. President of the Wilson Center, it's Blaise my great Campaore pleasure to Burkina welcome Faso. the president of Burkina Faso, Blaise Campaore. Who is here? We also have several African ambassadors to the U.S. with us today. Ambassador Sedo Boda from Burkina Faso. <laughs> Ambassador Duanda uh, Diabate of Cote d'Ivoire. Ambassador Serge Mombouli of Congo. And Maman Sidiko from Niger. At the Wilson Center, we follow events on the ground in Africa very closely, especially events in Burkina Faso. Burkinabe Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jabril Basole, has been at the center for two public events in the course of one year, and our cooperation goes far back. Just a few hours ago, we hosted President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed of Somalia for a major policy address. Recently, we heard from then Se Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, Johnny Carson, who spoke on the state of U.S.-Africa relations. Our, our Africa program has a rich history. From 2003 to 2009, it was led by the late former Congressman Howard Wolpe, who served as the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs uh, Subcommittee on Africa for a decade. President, uh, Secretary Clinton, uh, President Clinton, uh, later appointed him as U.S. Special Envoy to the African Great Lakes region. In fact, Howard and our current Africa program director, Steve McDonald, met with President Capaiore in 2006 in Washington to discuss peace-building methodology in support of the uh, Ouagadougou talks in, on, on the Ivory Coast, which the president facilitated. When I think of Burkina Faso, I'm reminded of Secretary Clinton's remarks in Cape Town in 2012 when she said, some of our global problems need African solutions. Well, President Campaore has built a cottage industry for peace over the years in Togo, the Ivory Coast. Yes, let's applaud that again, a cottage industry for peace. In Togo, the I Ivory Coast, and most recently in Mali, facilitating the process that led to peaceful presidential elections in August. The Economist magazine has dubbed him as the region's most respected peace broker. <laughs> and because of him, Burkina Faso has influence far beyond its borders in neighboring states that have experienced violence and instability. <coughs> I am a former member of our Congress who served on uh, most of the major security committees, and I can tell you that for years, Africa has received too little attention. We underestimated Al-Qaeda's abilities to get a beachhead in places like Mali, although many in Africa, and even in our own government, warned that this could happen. <coughs> that being said, Burkina Faso has good reason to want peace. In addition to the 16 million people who live within its borders, millions more live in neighboring states. During the crisis in Mali, uh, Burkina Faso saw the arrival of 60,000 refugees from that country. And President Campaiori has talked about how a country needs peace and stability to attract foreign investors. But wanting peace and making peace are two different things. President Campaiori has spoken about the importance of preventative diplomacy. He has said that when a conflict arises in Africa, the first actors should be Africans themselves. And that's why the Burkinabe paradigm is so compelling. <laughs> 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 
Next week will be the UN General Assembly, and he and many other world leaders will travel there. Much will go on, I predict, in New York, and it will be very interesting. But it is uh, very um, uh, inspiring to see a leader who already is not just uh, wanting peace, but making peace in his region. And Mr. President, it is an honor to welcome you to speak at the Wilson Center. Please welcome President Campaiori. Ladies, um, the president of the center, distinguished guest, when I came here in 2014 for, I, I will try to, to talk to you in English when I will be back in 2014. But, malheureusement, ce soir, ce n'est pas possible. Then I would like to, session, to go back to the session dire, and tell you. And I hope there is an interpreter for you. Ah, ça va? Ah, bon. Oui. Alors, je voudrais vous dire combien nous sommes vraiment pleins d'émotions cet après-midi. Uh, to participate with you to this uh, exchange platform because we are coming in a center that has a long history uh, of the United States. And it's about the history of a people who are generous, of a people who is uh, able and ready to sacrifice itself to the other and want to help the humanity. And a, peop uh, a people, um, who, who are ready to teach us because we have so much um, challenge and uh, we need to talk about Israel, we need to talk about all the conflicts in Africa. And I would like also with a lot of happiness to talk about the topic of peace. And that's a topic that is absolutely primordial for the African. This is true that since the World War II, the second one then, um, all the world uh, began to, to cool itself, especially after the Cold War. But you could, you could see right now that conflict are still, um, we are still have many conflicts. We have a lot of um, eschec, especially in North Africa, specifically in the Occidental part in the north of the Africa, we we lived also a lot of bad government who didn't know how to handle the all the expectancy of the people of the about liberty, about the progress, about uh, sharing uh, the wealth um, in a, a fashionably manner, and about all the transition. Um, all the people that try to get established uh, on the continent. Also about all the people and different religious group. So mainly wh what is really important for us is that to end the conflict is to prevent conflict. So that's mean that we have to involve ourselves very deeply in the research to how to prevent this kind of conflict. Prevention is first to work to create trust between different people, population, between the people and the administration, between people, administration, and government, and between all the different 
government that you can find uh, on the world. So first things is a basis of trust. How could we uh, work between state, um, how to uh, manage conflicts, how to manage um, possible conflicts. And this is very important that we keep the dialogue um, and the big worth in our world is to, to go for peace. So dialogue is something that could have only good result, only if we are trusting each other at first. So let's go also to be able to make some compromise, to make some uh, equal compromise, a fair compromise, and that inside our conflict that everything would be only for one side and nothing for the other side. It's like in our village, like when you have two grown-ups fighting for a sum, an amount of money, it's because one of them wants more than half of it. And we try also to listen to the people of our village. I can remember that some brothers, cousin, that would say that at home, when we are talking about things or inside a family, when in a family you, we are eating and we are forgetting, that's not a problem. But when we are talking about trouble without myself, then it becomes a problem. So it means that Africa should open itself today, and it should understand that all the speeches, all the compromise should build to something positive. We have to begin with that. I can remember of a professor um, teaching in Canada, in Quebec, uh, at the University of Quebec. And at one time, he saw how people would work, how, like in Africa, we would stuck with a lot of speeches and talks. And he said that the talk that would start and, and create and, and resolve conciliation and resolving problems. Compromise is really something that that's the most important discovery. The, the biggest, the most important word that we can give to humanity. If there is no compromise, even before middle age, if there was not this phenomenon of to talking about resolving, about using compromise, nobody would manage anything. We can remember Mandela. I have to re remind you about Mandela. He was helped by the government when he was beginning, how, on how he was seeing or um, had the vision about the tribes, how to work in Africa. And he would find himself in different tribes and talking from the morning to the, to the night. And the chief over there, or the little kings of village over there, as in my home country, you can go talk to the chief, and you can talk to him, and you could tell him everything that you pull your heart on him, because he's here. He's here to listen to you, even if it's good or if it's only trash that you are talking to him. You can tell anything to the chief. So in our world, in Africa, it's really important that you can be able to pour your emotion, and that's our culture, our custom, and we have to take advantage for that and, and to take advantage of the sharing of our words and also to try to understand the interest for us in this world who, who, who changed so much. That's true, I'm talking about the customs. But when you're looking at the youth of nowadays and all the conflict they are having, the youth is living in this world in a way very different from the world of our grandparents. So mediation should always adapt itself. 
or the exchange of our talks are, has to adapt itself. And like our, our chief have to compromise right now. Because what we are trying to see right now, or what we experience in our mediation, like the mediator that we have been, it's somebody who has to be very perseverant. He has to have always thinking about exchange of talks between everybody. And it's very important for him and for all of us that he is able to do synthesis. And like that, nobody, no party will think that he has lost everything in every proposition that we are going to do to them. So he could say, OK, I have to give a little, but I didn't lose everything. So that's how we try to work uh, through different mediation. And that's what is important. And I can see that when we try always to be on the same level, to be very firm, to be very fair, firm on our proposition, we could reach to an agreement. We could reach, convince people uh, in our uh, exchange. So that's why we can say that Africa has a big role to play nowadays. Because not only we have this situation that is concerning everybody in our continent, all our own conflict in Africa, but also our security inside the continent will concern everybody about the stability of peace in all over the world. You can see French, British, American, they are all over us to see what about the question of the chemical weapon. I can understand the position of the United States. And you know, in Burkina Faso, we are talking about the same topics about security and safety. And we know that the phenomenon for terrorism in Sahel could affect Europe, could affect you, the United States but will affect also Burkina Faso and will affect also Niger. So this phenomenon in our space affects like everybody. So this. Likewise, we understand that on the question of chemical weapons, the US is at the forefront. The US has indeed a historical responsibility a historical responsibility that is higher than the one of Burkina Faso today. So we should put together our efforts and uh, lead those uh, fights in this historical period. And we want to be firm and to be courageous and determined together. Ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, why we have come to speak with you, but also to listen to you. Maybe I'm going to talk about things that are not of great interest to you. So if you have other ideas, um, um, that's all right. I'm here to listen to you and to share with you. And I thank you very much for this uh, beautiful uh, audience that I have uh, in front of me today. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. With your permission, <laughs> I will speak in English. Uh, uh, we, uh, the President, as you heard, has agreed to, uh, to spend some time in dialogue with you and take some questions and answers. We have uh, uh, an overflow room as well, Mr. President, where there are other uh, visitors who may send us some messages. We also are li being streamed on, live on uh, on our webcast and being covered, as you see, by uh, by television. And we are also have tweeting throughout the event. So uh, we want to tell those who are on uh, on Twitter that uh, they can uh, get our Twitter handle at Africa at Africa up close and use hashtag hashprez talk Burkina Faso. Uh, I also, before we recognize any of the questions from the floor, want to recognize our, our co-sponsors uh, and, and have them stand. Uh, Gloria Herndon, who's in the front row here, has worked very closely with us from GBNSE. 
worked very closely with us in bringing this event about, including her staffers, Estelle in particular, and we thank you for that. And then uh, I haven't seen Walker, but Walker Williams and Leadership Africa and their staff have worked very closely with us. So thank you very much, Walker. And <laughs> Okay, now with no further ado then, uh, I will uh, recognize uh, 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 you for a question. Uh, raise your hand, I'll recognize you. Because we are being webcast live, please wait for a moment uh, for the microphone to arrive and then identify yourself. You can ask your questions in French or English. The president has his, um, his earphones so he can, he can take them either way. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I'm sure he's going to respond in French, though. So uh, I'll pl fl throw the floor open. Uh, welcome to take the first questions. Uh, one right in front here. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Nous vous remercions de votre présence. J'ai regardé à la télévision votre nom partout. Presence among us. I see that your name is everywhere in the Mali news. And there is the new uh, president, IBK. We know that you uh, have been on the forefront of the negotiations so that Mali can today uh, become a, a country at peace and a country that can hope anew in its own development. Uh, what advice would you give uh, for all the uh, African nationals in the diaspora uh, at this uh, in regard Mali. Uh, okay, uh, the young man first, yes. Le jeune homme d'abord. And then right in front of him, the young lady. Ensuite, la jeune femme. I am uh, from the uh, Library of Congress and originally from Mauritania. And I want to ask a question concerning the villagers. Uh, saying, uh, qui disait que ce n'est pas un problème uh, de ne pas avoir uh, la nourriture. Economic development, because this morning we, we heard from uh, at the Walter, uh, uh, Walter Washington perspective from scholars and activists that democracy is so important. So do you think that uh, which one is the priority for preventing uh, terrorism and security, security question? Is this democracy or economic development? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And the young lady in front. <laughs> Bonjour. I, sorry, I hate speaking on microphones. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for coming to the United States. I'm a return Peace Corps volunteer from Burkina Faso. My name is Kim. I have several questions, but in speaking of preventative measures in terms of conflict for West Africa and whatnot, I'm just curious as to your thoughts on what the effect of Colonel Gaddafi's death has led to the conflicts in West Africa, specifically in Mali. Thank you. Okay, Mr. President. Alors la première question porte sur la diaspora. Regarding the diaspora, the African diaspora, I do not think there is any advice I should give the diaspora. On the contrary, I think I want to congratulate the African diaspora for their consciousness and their awareness of um, the uh, necessity for them to participate in the reconstruction of the continent. I find that this diaspora is energetic, committed, creative, with great imagination. It's better formed uh, than uh, often, oftentimes than the Africans who have remained on the continent. So I always uh, say to the uh, Burkanabe in, uh, outside of Africa, do not be uh, ashamed. There are uh, millions of other Europeans working outside of their borders. Even the construction of uh, a country such as the United States is also um, done through um, the coming together of many of uh, global diasporas. So we, we, we 
we acknowledge that people can have different destinies, different ways, different journeys uh, towards happiness and uh, that they can bring happiness back to their own country. So what I want to say to the diaspora is to encourage the diaspora to organize itself better in order to be able to intervene with greater efficacy in the fields of education, health, and also the in promoting the uh, political principles uh, and the political processes that we need to put in place in Africa. And I think that oftentimes the diaspora has uh, more know-how than the African people who have remained on the continent. Regarding political participation, democratic participation, I gave this example to show how much dialogue is important for Africans and especially in the cultural space in which I lived, we are uh, members of a great family and we leave that, that family and uh, you come back home and you see that they are, your family is eating. They have not invited you because you had left, you had gone. But for you, it's less serious than if you were finding them, organizing the future of the family without having told you. So for Africans, participating in their own destiny is a very important dimension. And it's, it, it echoes the political problems we are encountering today and the problems that create those crises we need to solve. So dialogue has to come first. We can always say, oh, you see, uh, you, you spoke together, you explained to him or them why you were hungry. But until we have spoken, uh, that's where the humiliation comes, when we cannot dialogue, when we are excluded from the dialogue. And that's from that stems a, a lack of trust, and then we cannot build anything, we cannot have any compromise. That's what I wanted to, I was trying to express. About uh, prevention for the peace, I, I didn't really understood this question. What I wanted to know only was if after the death of Colonel Gaddafi Amori, it did affect the area and uh, affect Mali. <laughs> to affect or to change the area, yes, it is sure that about the safety or security, we could understand that a large part of the material that has been engaged against the legitimacy of Mali was from Libya. It what he has been said, but we didn't go there to check it. But it seems that some of this material uh, about all everything that followed the event of the death of Gaddafi, we could see especially about north of Mali. But I cannot say. What is sure it's above that, whatever we are saying, he had a state that was not, a country that was not democratic. But he had contained all the tribal conflict inside Libya. And now, nowadays, it seems that since his death, everything's went away and that it becomes to be very unstable. And I think it will take a long time before it goes back to what it was before. And it, if you look at all the neighboring country between Egypt, the Libya, and Chad, and all that, they all have to have some worries about that. 
but that it was death or if he had just left in any other way uh, it would have had the same effect and when you see all the conflict that they had in Egypt oh what was your question I am not sure exactly what I'm sure about that about all these regimes I can remember that in 2006 I uh, left for Libya and since uh, with uh, Qaddafi, we, we didn't get along. <laughs> he talked to me about some problems worldwide, about his view about imperialisms. And I told him that the problem was Qaddafi. The day that you are going to leave the power is not imperialism that will make you leave the your power or your position but it will be the street who will make you or people from the street who will make you leave uh, your position of power so because i told him and we talk at least for one hour and i told him that in libya you don't have any liberty we we cannot talk uh, freely about things you cannot sell gasoline uh, at a gas station, it it was just like uh, imper absolute imperialism with him. And um, that day, I told him that because this country is so closed, and in history we didn't see any close country to hold for centuries. We didn't know exactly how it would end, but we knew that he would end with difficulties. Thank you, Mr. President. We have time for three more questions. And here the first one. <laughs> we are listening. OK. Oui, le premier, le bas. Oui. Right here. Mm -hmm. Merci. Excellence, Monsieur le Président, merci d'être ici. Merci, Mr. President. Thank you so much to be here and we are so happy to welcome our president inside the United States. Please present yourself. So my name is Saudo Mathieu and uh, I'm from Burkina Faso but I live here. So for the peace there is just a step to go and, and we can say that economy and peace are linked. And so for people who know me well, I uh, know that uh, my first question is, in Burkina, we want from you an image that you're going to live and that eventually somebody will have to replace you. So what is the picture? What is the, the heritage that you want to leave us? In Burkina, we would like you to be really the man who will bring us a safe and sound economy. And for example, like we have some troubles for us, we, we have some drought with our lake, some drought with our river. And like for the history, you promised about the lake of Bam that you would take the sand off of it. And also in uh, 92, we had a lot of trouble with electricity. In Burkina Faso, we have sun 365 days uh, per year. So we have so much sun. So don't you think that we would have here, don't you think that we would have some connection, that we would have less trouble with electricity, that we create electricity thanks to the sun? Je m'appelle Josiane Blue. Uh, Blue, I'm from Burkina, but I married an American. So thank you, Your Excellency, to came here in the United States and to share your experience with us. It's a real honor for us. And when everything that you said or you did, could you talk? Could you talk or tell us about all your experience 
about your experiences, good or bad, and everything that you did to be in a mediation. Uh, didn't you? So the last question uh, is... Uh, welcome, Mr. President. It's from Shedigu from Nigeria. So welcome, Mr. President. I'm so happy to see you after 13 years. Your, the fact that you came here today is the mark, the showing that what we are trying to do with the education with the American is to try to show to our friends, to our American friends, even the one at the highest level, to educate all their um, citizen about the question in Africa. So I would like not to, to talk or to ask a question, but to beg you to intervene for us uh, that all the um, ambassador would be helped, would be held more tightly, would be more consistent, and worked all together and, 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 and work not only in Washington, leave Washington and go inside the deep country of the United States to try to educate them about our country, our culture. Sometimes we have the impression that we have an Africa that has two speed. Everything that we have to receive about the infra infrastructure and the one that we are observing or we develop our market. And I can tell you that Chinese is observing us now. So there is something about our friends, American friends, uh, would like to ask you. And uh, uh, wait, wait, which China are you talking about? <laughs> I know, Mr. President, that we are talking about uh, your relationship with Taiwan, but I'm talking about China with the most present uh, about investment when. I see, I see. Thank you. I believe that the question of Matthew here from Burkina, I, I think he needs to uh, get more information so that he can understand that in spite of uh, our, uh, the limitations of our economy, on most fronts, Burkina is moving forward and the horizon of 2014, 2015, we hope to be able to reach a growth of 10%. And we know it's uh, not the case of everybody in this difficult uh, situation. So we are making progress and we hope to reach a 10% growth. Even this year, the first semester, uh, growth was uh, 30%. 13% in energy consumption. So we need to double our capacities of today within five years. So indeed, uh, it's very, um, uh, very demanding what we're doing in the field of energy. So please do get your um, information. And the interconnections in our uh, uh, countries is, uh, is very strong. Niger, Nigeria, Mali, us. We know that uh, a, a Chinese um, firm has uh, set up a uh, solar panel uh, firm. And uh, we're going to be able to have 10 uh, megawatts per year. So it's a big firm that is uh, settling up uh, its um, uh, uh, plants here will have a solar uh, uh, plant of 20 megawatts uh, in 2015. And we have just signed uh, a contract with Canada for another solar plan of 10 megawatts. And I'm going to discuss with uh, US Americans uh, while, during my trip um, 
to see if we can add other solar plants. We understand that energy is at the basis of everything we want to do. Six, at the moment, we are at 60% of uh, coverage of our uh, territory in energy. So the other questions, we'll talk about them amongst us in, as in a family. But yes, we have the sunshine, Burkina and maybe California. Uh, but that's, uh, we are the first uh, the, at the top of the list in terms of lumin luminosity and uh, sun exposure. So mediation. Mediation is not a place where we, we are happy. It's not a happiness place. It's a place of tensions, and we need to be, pers to be perseverant. For Mali, for example, is very different from Kazakhstan for us. It's our border. It's, uh, uh, Burkina and Mali, we are um, very close. At the beginning, we had 100,000 uh, 100, refugees. So it is absolutely necessary for us to solve the Mali question. We are down to 50,000 refugees today. So it is our interest to uh, stop this crisis in Mali. We also have two Aregs in Burkina. And when uh, Anne Sardine was uh, asking for Sharia, they were telling us, they were telling us that they were half Burkinas, Burkinese. And I said, well, really, I, I can only see your eyes. And he tells me he's, uh, he is also from Burkina. No, no, it's not possible. I can only see his eyes. So the, the neighboring countries, Mauritania, Niger, Algeria, uh, we, are, we, we work also for our interest. It's not just to help Mali, but it's also for our interest. But while during mediations, uh, we hope we, you think you're going to um, to to strike the, the deal, and then up the phone the rings, and you hear that the president was just killed of another country. So you you have to to start from scratch. So in Ivory Coast uh, is another example. You signed the agreement, the contract, and the following week you hear that uh, the prime minister plane was shot. And so you never know. Uh, if, you, if you have hard problems, it's a very uh, difficult and dangerous place to be in negotiations. So when, at times, oftentimes, when you see that things are moving forward, then you have Bagbo who uh, um, um, dismisses the, um, the parliament. So you see, you always have events that we need to manage and respond to. But it's only when we see results, uh, as is the case for Mali, uh, along the way, we had good reasons to be discouraged because there are people who want war and they really want to fight. But I believe that war is not the solution. And I believe that Mali questions are political. And it's the poor governance of that region that needs to be fixed. There is no need to start with war. War is for terrorists. It's for uh, trafficking, but not for political malgovernance. So we learn in that process. We learn about people, about human beings, and we learn about the region. Uh, regarding ECOWAS, I want to say that the world has taught us good history lessons. Those who have moved forward are those who have spoken together. If uh, all the states or the colonies uh, in the uh, early United States had remained apart, we would never have had this 
big United States country. They understood they needed to speak to one another and start this federation. And for us, uh, a feder an African federation has been talked about for uh, decades now. And uh, we want to step up this integration because we, we, we don't even have uh, a common uh, tariff at our borders of Africa. So we have uh, 320 millions of uh, consumers. Americans will just come and run. We won't even have to advertise to them. They will understand and they will come. Uh, and they will buy your products. And But now, if you are in Africa and you want to, um, to, to, to have your trades, you have at least 20 roadblocks and, and, and tariffs. So you cannot even uh, sell your products among ourselves. So it is very important for us African states to build up our uh, integration and that we really have a strong economical uh, community of the West African states so that we can attract people and markets. It is true, the world is open and free. Uh, we have to be careful not to uh, have uh, judgments, uh, value judgments on, um, ev on the different countries' uh, attitude. Everybody has to defend their own interests. So China has their own interest, and I cannot criticize China for uh, uh, working towards fulfilling their own interests, but it's for us to organize ourselves. Uh, we need to organize, we need to implement reforms. For example, Adidas from uh, and different groups from Denmark are studying the reforms we have started, and they recognize that in Burkina and uh, Mauritius, the Mauritius island, are uh, uh, very um, in advance. And, uh, uh, we need to um, organize ourselves so that we can have more performing administrations and a higher uh, economic production. That's what's the most important for us. And Americans, I am very happy to say and to see that the United States over the last two or three years through the MECC uh, is uh, first or second in terms of cooperations for development in Burkina. And it's because in order to join the MCC, uh, countries such as Burkina have to prove that they have uh, implemented uh, performing reforms. And that's what is happening. We, we have succeeded into doing this, and uh, now Americans are coming to us. But if we had come and just talked just to them and, uh, and tried to seduce them with our, it wouldn't have worked. So thank you very much. President I am Gloria Bozeman Herndon, the CEO of GB Global Group. And uh, we are very happy to be able to one of the, be the, one of the co-sponsors of this event today with the Woodrow Wilson Center, as well as with Leadership Africa, with the Embassy of Burkina Faso. And we thank all of you for coming out today. Our, some of our people are here. Dr. Diane is the vice president of one of our subsidiaries, uh, GB Pharma. And of course, Dr. Hirson is here as the vice president of GB Global. We're, we're thankful to be here, and I am so happy to have the opportunity to do what we do best. We find the best in Africa, and we celebrate it. And today, we are celebrating the best in Africa. Mm -hmm. 
Your Excellency, you are one who tells your story, and that's very important. Your, your history, your story, you tell. Secondly, you are one who solved your own problems, and that is incredible. You're not calling anybody else to solve the problems that you have at home. And then you're taking care of your citizens. You're taking care of your people. So in our little small culture, we call that a hero. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> applaud you for your <laughs> Thank you so much. And we are ending this part, mm -hmm. and we are going to have continued dialogue. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see a lot of us with Burkina Faso. And we want you to know on this side of the, the, the waters, you got a friend. You got a lot of friends. And we appreciate you. We want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for your leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Hernan. We appreciate your remarks, and uh, I'm sure the President does too. Uh, just one last word for me before we close the session, and that is to say how much we appreciate the work that we uh, did with uh, the, the embassy which co-sponsored this. Uh, Ambassador Buddha has been a long-standing friend and, and a very good colleague, and you are well represented in this country. Okay. Thank the President with me. Now, please be seated while the President and his entourage depart. Thank you very much.